Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I designed and built a fully vented roof for my DIY timber frame structure. And the difficult pitch transition I stuck myself with. And don't forget to check out my previous videos on the project. Alright, first up after getting the ceiling joists in is to put down the tongue and groove. I used a 6 inch tongue and groove pine and laid it all across the roof as this is going to be the first layer seen on the inside of the house. Once this was in place, we have to put down a membrane to keep this dry from any condensation from the roof. So I use a poly, uh, a fiber reinforced poly that's stapled down to the roof. Then for the uh, minimum recommended R value for my area, we needed to do six inches of foam. So this is three layers of two inch uh, foam board that's then screwed with uh, long screws and washers into the ceiling joists. On top of that, uh, we seal all of the seams on all these, all of these uh, foam boards and then uh, screw them down with the two by fours. Okay, so this is six inches of foam. This is a big giant soffit. So the air will come up into soft holes that get drilled into the bottom of this. And the air will be able to squeeze between the uh, roof plywood just through this gap here, which will be screened off. And then the air will be able to travel up here and then we'll put a ridge vent across the top. Then you can also see this set up so that any moisture can just run down and out the soffit. You get giant mosquitoes here in Maine. Just kidding, this is actually a crane fly. These things eat mosquitoes, so they're actually good. So try to leave these things alone. So after we get our soffit vents drilled and we have the actual breathing setup for the roof done, we can actually go ahead and sheathe the roof in this um, very expensive zip system waterproof plywood. We're gonna actually go ahead and make sure we seal together all the seams and uh, screw this with eight inch long screws all the way through the entire system, through the two by fours, through the styrofoam, into the ceiling joists, really long screws. It's very important to get these straight and make sure they don't poke out, which happened a couple of times. And then we're gonna seal these in with some tar and some tape. And uh, this zip system actually uses this special tool here, but I don't see how this is really any different from a skateboard. So let's just go ahead and use this old skateboard I have. Okay, so we've got a flashed lip that runs all the way underneath the drip edge here. This is sealed off and taped, and then that will get flashed underneath the drip edge. Same with the flashing here. It goes all the way up underneath the drip edge, all the way down. It's completely sealed, every single seam. This is just sealed while we're waiting for the vent. I will cut this open and then fold the uh, tape around the edge to seal the top edge of the board, and then the vent for the, uh, the ridge cap vent will go along here. Uh, I'm going to do grace and water shield here. And then from this side, all the way up, grace and water shield uh, up, if not all the way up, pretty high. Um, and then we've got all of our edges sealed all the way around. And, and then uh, the next step is putting down the drip edge along here. So as you can see, Pretty tight, wa pretty watertight roof, even as is right now. It looks pretty good.
full starter shingles all the way around, full grace. I have a vent in here, I just haven't cut it because I don't want anything to get in there. But. I'm good. All right, here's probably the most difficult part of this roof. I put in a pitch transition so that the two roof pitches would meet up um, and I didn't have to intersect the roofs. And what this caused um, was a situation for the shingles where shingles need to lie flat. So in order to change from one pitch to another, you actually have to do the special uh, layering procedure where you end one course of shingles, uh, you add a metal flashing that's partially bent and uh, I sealed that also to the previous course. Then you do another layer of starter shingle and then continue with your asphalt shingles. And you also make sure to uh, tape the metal flashing to the roof before you do your, uh, your second row of starter shingle. And then that makes a completely waterproof pitch transition in the roof. All right, here you can see how we actually waterproof each new course of shingles with a, a dab of sealant, a piece of flashing, and then um, a piece of sealant on top of that, and then lay down your next course of shingles. And the whole purpose of this is even though every subsequent layer of this roof is waterproof in and of itself, the point is you want the water kicking out on top of the shingles each time. You don't actually want it running down underneath all of these shingles. It's not the purpose of the Grayson Water Shield. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the vent in the roof, cut into our uh, our seal on the top here and fold these ends in. And with this cut, now the air can actually flow through this entire roof structure and out this ridge cap. And now we're gonna install our ridge cap. And just as I was finished installing this ridge cap, uh, it started raining on me. And here we get to actually watch the first couple of drops of water and how these run down uh, the flashing and down the shingles uh, and off the drip edge. You can see the roof function. So if you guys like this video, make sure to check out the other videos in this series on this building and uh, make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button and I'll catch you guys next time. Oh my god. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it.